The battle over health care reform. The debate lurches back into gear this week as vacationing lawmakers return to Capitol Hill. One of the options they'll consider is creating a health care cooperative. What would that mean? Chief National Correspondent John King has some lessons from the heartland. 280 cows here. Each eats about 100 pounds of feed a day. Three milking cycles, not to mention tending to the corn and other crops. A family farm is a long, hard day's work. And with milk prices down, a profit is hard to come by, which makes Bob Topol all the more grateful for his invisible partner. Seed, fuel, fertilizer, feed, uh, everything we buy is pretty much through a cooperative. We market our milk through a cooperative. If there is any profit made, the profit returns to the owners. So the more you use the cooperative, the more earnings you get back. Co-ops have been around for over 100 years in agriculture. And for the past 10 months, Topol has turned to the co-op approach for something far more personal, his health care. Joining a two-and-a-half-year-old farmer's cooperative, he says should be a model, as Washington looks for a way to force private insurance companies to compete more for their business. Step it up. A lot of farmers who had individual health insurance elsewhere came to us and saw their premiums go down. And, and the other benefit we saw was there was farmers who didn't come to Farmers Health, but by putting an extra layer of competition in the marketplace, their premiums went down just to meet what the Farmers Health was putting out. And these two are the best. Now I got it. All right. Competition and choice are the main goals, and co-op fans say their way makes more sense than a new government-run health insurance option. 85% of the members of the Farmers Health Cooperative, for example, reported to us either their premiums fell or they stayed somewhat similar to what they had before. But as importantly, 65% of them said their health benefits actually increased substantially over what they had before. So where co-ops are, they tend to be very, very high quality because it is the consumer who owns them is making sure that their health care provider is a quality health care provider. In addition to expanding choice and competition, Bill Olmekin of the Cooperative Network says the plans are helping with another big problem. About 12 percent of our members were previously uninsured, and so we think we've had a real impact on bringing in producers who previously couldn't get access to health insurance. Wisconsin has a dozen health care co-ops in all. Some hire doctors directly. You took x-rays today? Others use their pooled purchasing power to negotiate better rates with private insurers. The plans are widely accepted across the state, including this clinic in Monroe. No numbness or tingling. Bob Topol and those critics suggest what works in rural areas or small cities might not fit in more diverse suburbs or in urban America. But he's just as skeptical that government has the answer. To me, just looking at the way the government managed the clunkers program and managed the uh, FEMA and, and, and Katrina and all those things. I just, I don't want to turn my health care over to a government agency and try to get my round peg in a square hole. And if it doesn't fit, I'm in, caught in some bureaucratic red tape. With a co-op system, I know the people that I can call and, and they're going to take care of me because I'm an owner versus just a number. John King, CNN, Waterloo, Wisconsin.